So, it was on the 27th of February last year that I first came to Plymouth College of Art and gave a lecture to fine art, fine art students in this lecture theatre. Theater. Some of you might have been here. Um, and I was talking about some of the work which I've made over the previous six years, which I'd referred to as my data collecting projects. These were pieces where I religiously collected information about different aspects of my everyday life often over long periods of time. For example, this project, E22, which some of you might have heard about before, um, I recorded everything that I ate for a year, and these are just 60 of the 1,640 photographs that I took over the course of that year. Or Gold Card Adventures, which was a project where I documented the total distance that I travelled on London transport over the course of the year which amounted to 9,210 kilometres, which is the same equivalent distance as travelling from London to Shanghai. Um, so by the, by the time that I was in Plymouth last February, I'd already began to acknowledge that this sort of work was not particularly healthy for me to be producing. And for over five years, I'd felt myself being dragged between these different projects from one to the next, relentlessly collecting more and more information and setting up more and more demanding structures. Um, this project, the data quantification records, I collected um, data about 14 different aspects of my everyday life each day over the course of 2003. Um, the process involved me using a variety of data collecting devices which I had to keep with me the whole time, such as this pedometer which I wore on my waistband every day for that year to count, count, count the number of steps that I did, and this special body fat monitor which I took everywhere with me when I went when I travelled in 2003 so that I could take these daily measurements. So, as you can see, and you can probably tell if you've looked at the exhibition or the book, that these projects were pretty obsessive things to be involved with. They required a huge amount of commitment and dedication, and often over these really extended periods of time, of a year or even longer. And the real downside to that was that despite all of this effort and, and this relentless patience and hard work collecting the information. Um, the work that I was producing at the end, I found quite problematic. I didn't like it that much. And it wasn't really the sort of work that I wanted to be making. And most importantly, I didn't really feel like I was saying anything particularly important with the pieces that I, were produ that I was producing. And it was kind of as though I was on this data collecting autopilot and I began looking further and further at these smaller and smaller details and insignificant aspects of my everyday life to the point where I kind of felt that my work was completely self-absorbed. And as a result of that, I felt that I was completely ignoring actually more important things that were going on in the wider world. So what I, d I decided to quit data collecting and to become a recovering data collector. And as you can see, that's the title of the book that we've published um, with Plymouth College of Art. The plan was, when I became a recovering data collector, my plan was to begin to develop new ways of approaching the art making process. And which I hope would address all of the issues that I'd identified in my former practice. And to begin to respond to more, what I saw as more significant subjects, larger things than just these tiny details in my everyday life, like the number of steps that I walked each day or how much I happened to weigh on a particular day. So it was during my visit to Plymouth last year 
that Hannah invited me to return to the college to become artist in residence at the beginning of this year. And we, we talked about it quite a lot and we, we both kind of knew that this period of time from January up until now would sort of oversee and also facilitate this process of recovery, if you like. And that the residency would support my research and development into a new body of work which I hoped would kind of signal the direction that I wanted to take as an artist. So the residency which I've undertaken here at the college since January has kind of developed to encompass these three different strands and I'm going to talk about each of the different strands um, here today and aspects of each of them are represented in the exhibition which is on in the viewpoint gallery. So the first element of the residency is the publication, Confessions of a Recovering Data Collector. And the intention of the publication was to bring together and summarise and also reflect upon these previous data collecting projects. And the book kind of aimed to provide a sort of element of closure to this aspect of my practice and also to suggest possible alternative ways of working. The second aspect <laughs> of the residency has been the vending machine project. This is an early photograph from one of my earlier research visits just after we managed to source the vending machine on eBay and I was rather pleased with myself that <laughs> we actually had one. Um, so, I hope that most of you would have had a chance to see the vending machine, and if you haven't realised that it's not actually a normal vending machine, then do go and have a look at it. Um, the idea is that the vending machine is connected to a, a piece of special, specially designed software which scans the BBC News RSS feed uh, live on the internet, looking for headlines that relate to the recession. And when those headlines crop up, it vends out a free packet of crisps. And I'm going to talk about the vending machine project in a little bit more detail um, later on. But the, I just wanted to touch on the third element of the residency, which was the work that I did with the fine arts students. And in particular, the workshop um, called How Can the World Affect My Work, which I carried out on the 25th of February um, with the first year foundation degree fine arts students. And the idea was to encourage the students to look, to begin to explore and also question how local and global events as reported in the news um, can affect the work that we produce as artists. So the idea was to create an atmosphere that was kind of similar to a busy press room floor and to read through, dissect and compare and contrast all of the different types of newspaper and then to make a kind of almost spontaneous response to what you read or saw in the paper. And it was a very sort of quick fire project and the idea was to compile everything into our own alternative newspaper which we produced by the end of the day and which you can also collect in the gallery. So I do see that the, th the three different aspects of the residency that I've described do cross over and in this kind of broader sense you could say that each has been geared towards exploring the role of the artist um, in responding to and critiquing these um, wider political events, if you like. 